All right, now we are getting somewhere. Welcome back guys. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to plant. If you ask a vaulter what the most important part of the vault is, they'll probably say that it's the plant. And I would tend to agree with that. The reason the plant is so important is that it provides the transition required to convert the horizontal energy of the run into vertical movement. Now the plant can be made to be a very complex movement and it is a technical one that can be broken up into several parts, but I like to at least start by keeping it as simple as possible and describing the plant as, um, as one motion. I introduce the plant to vaulters by starting with arm movements and then later I add the leg movements. Our movements of the pole drop and plant. To begin with this, I want to start with some definitions. I'm going to be calling this my top hand and my top arm. I'm going to be calling this my bottom hand and my bottom arm. And hopefully that makes sense because my top hand is near the top of the pole. However, that I share that with you because once you get into the carry position, like this, this is still my bottom hand, even though it's above my top hand. Okay? So to describe the pole drop movement, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I tell athletes, just keep your top hand pinned to your hip and your bottom hand moves down about eight inches, about like this, okay? Now, as far as knowing how far you come down, um, eight inches is a good rule of thumb, but basically you want your hand to not drop below your elbow, okay? So you don't want to be like this. Hand down to about the level of your elbow. Now this pole drop movement occurs over three steps of the run, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. At the end of the pole drop comes the pole plant, and basically I tell athletes that the roles of your arms basically switches at this point. So the bottom hand becomes the point of rotation, and at this point your top hand begins to move. And when it moves, it stays close to the side of your body and moves right along your body. Like this. Okay? So it's Carry position, pull drop, pull plant. Now what you don't want to see is no pull drop at all, going right into the plant, which ends up in a high plant. You don't want too low a pull drop, which ends up in a low plant. As far as the top hand goes, you want to keep it close to your body so you don't want it swinging behind you. Like that. You don't want it coming out in front of you either. Now, if you have athletes that are struggling with these movements that I just shared with you, you can break them up into different positions. And when I do that, there's four positions that I show them. The first is the pull drop, which is pretty simple. First movement of the pull plant is to the ribs. Second one is to the eyes. And the third one is all the way up. Okay? So it's one, two, three, four. And those are the arm movements of the pull drop and plant. Here Libby will be demonstrating the arm movements of the pull drop and plant from a standing position. Things to look for in athletes doing this drill are that the top hand is close to the body and moving up along their side, that the top arm is stretching all the way up and hitting max stretch up at the same time the pull tip hits the ground, that the top grip is tightening, and that the top arm leads the bottom arm going up. Also check to see that the initial bottom arm movement of the pole drop is moving to the correct location, which is at about the bottom of the ribs. In this case, Libby's hand is a little bit high. Here, Claire will be doing the same thing. Even though she's a left-handed vaulter, you can see the arm movements of her pole drop and plant are very similar to those of Libby's. One small difference I will point out, when we were looking at Libby's video, I made mention that the initial movement of her bottom arm for the pole drop was not quite getting low enough. In Claire's case, I would say it's getting low enough, but she also starts it lower as well. So just a couple examples of things you should be looking for when you have athletes do these drills. Here, Claire will again be demonstrating the arm movements of the pole drop and plant. Only this time I asked her to do it more slowly so you could better see the movements that her arms make. 
as I pointed out in the last video clip of her doing this, her bottom arm does get down to where it should be at the end of the pull drop. Uh, however, she does start it low to begin with. And in fact, you don't really see any downward movement of her bottom arm when she's going through these movements. So really what Claire's showing us here is, is more of the pull plant and she's really kind of starting the movements at the end of the pull drop. As I mentioned before, I usually start by describing the arm movements of the plant as one linear and direct movement, but I do sometimes find it helpful to break up the movement of the pull drop and plant into different positions. And when I do this, there are four different positions that I find helpful. Here Libby will demonstrate those plant positions. The first movement is the bottom hand drops for the pull drop. Right there. The second movement is the top hand moves up to the ribs right there. The third movement is the top hand moves up to alongside the ear right there. And then the last movement is stretching all the way up above the shoulder. One thing to look for is during the second movement right here, uh, the pole tip should be at about eye level. And in this case, it's a little bit above that. So again, Libby's bottom hand is maybe just a little bit high here. I'll now let it play the rest of the way through so you can see the movements without me stopping them. Here, Claire will demonstrate the four arm positions of the pole drop and plant as well. One, two, three, four. And the second time through, I'll stop her at the second position. One, two. Again, the pole tip should be at about eye level at this point. And in this case for Claire, it is. The difference between Libby at this point and Claire is just that Claire's bottom arm is a little bit lower. Once the athlete has the arm movements of the plant correct and locked into their muscle memory, they can add the leg movements. For all vaulters, the plant will take place over the last three steps of the run. And for most high school vaulters, the pole begins to drop from the carry position about three steps before that. So that is a total of six steps for the pole drop and plant. So to get vaulters started with combining the arm and leg movements together, I start them with just the pole drop over the first three steps. While they're doing this, you wanna make sure that they are starting from the carry position, that only the bottom arm moves and the top arm stays pinned at the hip, that the bottom arm starts to move as soon as the first step starts, that the bottom arm finishes the pole drop on the third step, and that the bottom arm finish position is as low as they can go and still keep the wrist above the elbow. This is usually at the bottom of the ribs. Here Libby will demonstrate the pole drop over three steps. One, two, three. And timing wise, everything looks pretty good. Her arm movements and leg movements are tied together well. They start at the same time, end at the same time. Her bottom hand is getting down to the level of her elbow and they're both at the level of the bottom of her ribs where they should be. Uh, only thing a little bit off that I wanna point out is you can see her top hand is drifted back behind her hips just a little bit. Now you'll see in subsequent videos, she doesn't do that when she goes from the pole drop into the plant. So I think what why it's happening here is um, she's trying to accommodate for the weight of the pole. It is rather hard to hold the pole out in front of you like that and so she's moving her hands back to try and support that weight. So next time I have her do this drill I would have her hold lower on the pole so that the weight of the pole doesn't impact her technique as much. Here Claire will do the same thing. One, two, three. Now the timing of Claire's pull drop is good as well. Arm movements and leg movements are starting at the same time, ending at the same time, and staying in sync. In this case, I would say that her bottom hand maybe could have dropped a little bit lower. You can see it's a little bit above her elbow. And just like with Libby, you can tell that she's compensating a little bit for the weight of the pole with her top hand drifting back just a little bit and her keeping her bottom elbow tucked a little bit too close to her body. So a word to coaches out there, you know, this is something that I didn't recognize in real time and only recognized when I started to look at these videos. So uh, always take videos of your kids on a periodic basis and, and look at these things for maybe some form breaks. And when you do this, this drill with, with the pole drop, definitely have vaulters move their grip down so they're not having to support the weight of that pole. 
Once the athletes have the pole drop figured out, the pole plant can be added to it. As a reminder, the following are aspects of the plant to be looking for. Number one, that it takes place over three steps, that the top hand is close to the body and moving along their side, that the top arm is stretching all the way up and hitting max stretch at the same time that the pole tip hits the ground, that the top hand grip is tightening as it goes up, and that the top hand leads the bottom hand going up. Here Libby will demonstrate the walking pole drop and plant. On the first time through, we'll just watch. On the second time through, I'll stop her at a few points to look at some things. So one, two, three of the pole drop, and one, two, three of the pole plant. Okay, first time through, I would say her top hand and top arm look really good. Uh, so no areas of improvement there. But we'll look at the end of the pole drop. So one, two, three. Okay, here I would say her bottom hand is about the right level, right at the bottom of her ribs. But you can see that her elbow is just a little bit above that. Uh, in general, Libby tends to like to lead things with her elbow versus her hand. And for the all the way through the pole drop and plant, I like to see the hand just a little bit above the elbow. Stop right here. This is the first step of the plant. Uh, this is a point where I like to see the pole tip be at eye level, and you can see that that's the case. Again, maybe her elbow is a little bit above her, her bottom hand, though, and the rest looks good. Here, Claire will complete the walking pole drop and plant as well. First time through, everything looked really good. There is one thing I want to point out at the end of the pole drop. One, two, three. Okay, so you can see that she's on her third step. She just should have just completed her pole drop, but she's actually already starting the pole plant. So she started the pole plant just a little bit early. And then if you follow that through to the first step of the pole plant, at this point, the pull tip should be at her eye level, and you can see that it's a little bit lower than that. So not a big deal, um, but something to work on. The rest of it is good. Now, just like with the standing plant arm movements, if falters aren't quite getting the movement right or the timing right, you can have them break it up into individual positions and run through the arm positions for each step. Here, Libby will demonstrate that. So three positions for the pull drop and three for the plant. So one, two, three, ribs, ear, all the way up. Here Claire will demonstrate the positions of the pull drop and plant as well. One thing that should become obvious as you watch any vaulter do this is that the movements of the pull drop are much more subtle than the movements of the pull plant. And that's because the purpose of these two elements are much different. For the pole drop, the purpose is to weightlessly lower the pole against the acceleration of the run. And for the pole plant, the purpose of that is to explosively transition into the takeoff. So let's take a look at that. Slower movements of the drop, faster movements of the plant. One more time. Once the vaulter can consistently complete the pole drop and plant from a walk, it can then be done from a jog and from a run, which Libby will demonstrate here. An important point to note though, before you have your athletes do this, you wanna be on a surface where the pole tip will slide easily across the ground. So this gym floor is ideal. Something like a track surface will often work, but you wanna test it out before you have your athletes do that because sometimes it can be a little grippy. And this is definitely something you don't wanna do on natural grass because it just has a tendency to grab the tip of the pole. So here Libby goes. And it looks good. Second time through, you might see their elbows a little bit high at the end of the pole drop, but still good. Here Claire will do the same thing. And at full speed, everything looks pretty good. We'll watch one more time. I'll now watch it in slow motion to see if there's anything I want to point out. 
Start with the pull drop. One, two, three. Then the pull plant. One, two, three. Second time through, there is one thing I'd like to point out. At the end of the pull drop. One, two, three. Right here, uh, her bottom hand is good. Uh, her bottom elbow is good. Uh, right about at the level of the bottom of her ribs, which is where I'd like to see it. The issue I actually have is with her top hand, uh, which is a little bit lower than I'd like to see it. It's actually about at her quad when I'd like to see it closer to her hip. Now the problem that causes, you can see in the first step of the plant, which is right here. As I mentioned before, the pole tip should be at about eye level, and here it's higher than that. And that's, I think, primarily because she just started fr from too low, so she had further to move, and that ended up making the plant a little bit late. So we'll watch the rest of it. Looks good, just a little bit late. Now, that's not a, a huge deal, uh, but definitely something to work on. Another drill you can do to help lock in the plant timing is the run in place drill. I find this drill challenges the athletes in a little different way than the moving run does. And through practice, it can help them to keep the timing of the plant and the run in sync. To keep things interesting, you can do this from a two, four, or six step and see if the vaulters can keep the arm movements in sync with the number of steps. Here Libby will complete this drill from four steps. Here, Claire will demonstrate the run in place drill as well. At the beginning of this drill, you'll see a little smile on her face and you can see that she's concentrating. Uh, neither her nor Libby have done this drill recently in practice. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, it can be a little challenging. But she still does a good job at it. So once the vaulter has the movements of the plant locked into their muscle memory, there are a few drills that can be completed to help transition to the next phase of the vault, which is the takeoff. The first drill is the single top arm plant and single bottom arm plant. The second drill is plant runs. And the last drill in the plant progression is the wall plant. Here Libby will demonstrate the single top arm plant. This drill allows the vaulter to work on the timing of the plant in that the top arm should be locked out just before the tip of the pole hits the ground. It also allows the vaulter to concentrate on just the arm movements of, of one arm rather than both of them at the same time as we've been doing so far. Here, Claire will be completing the single bottom arm plant drill. Uh, again, the point of this drill is to work on the timing of the plant and the movement of the bottom arm. Here in slow motion, Libby will be completing a 10 step plant run. This drill allows the vaulter to experience what the pole drop and plant feel like from a full speed run, and it also helps with figuring out the timing of the pole drop and plant. Now, since this is a 10 step plant run, Libby will be taking four steps in the carry position. One, two, three, four. Three steps for the pole drop and three steps for the plant. And you may notice that I've placed foam blocks to identify these three segments of the run. Okay, so she's carry position. As soon as she hits this block, you should start to see her bottom arm start to drop for the pull drop. It's coming down, down, down. And then at this point, her plant should start. Now she does start the plant a little bit late, but everything else looked pretty good. Here Claire will be completing the same 10 step plant run. On the first time through, I'll just let you watch. On the second time through, I'll point out something.
On the first time through, you might have uh, noted that between the first foam block and the second foam block, there's not any notable pull drop, but Claire does start her plant at the right time. So basically what she's doing is, is skipping over the pull drop and going right into the pull plant. Now that's not the end of the world, uh, but it's not ideal either. So that's something uh, that we'll have to work on a little bit. As far as figuring out the timing for the pull drop in the pull plant, there's a couple of ways to do it. Some people will count their steps. Uh, I've found that most vaulters aren't able to do that, that it's just too distracting. Uh, so what I usually do is to set up some foam blocks like this to give vaulters an idea of when they're supposed to start those things. And then as we move forward, just tell them, okay, it needs to be a little bit sooner or a little bit later. Here Libby will be demonstrating the last drill in the plant progression, and that is the wall plant drill. This drill gives the vaulter an idea of what it's going to feel like when the tip of the pole hits the back of the box. Now, before you have vaulters do this drill, you want to make sure that they understand that they're going to be walking into the drill and that they're not going to be jumping up at the end. Uh, if they do, they might end up on their backs. Here Claire will demonstrate the wall plant drill as well. Now as vaulters are doing this drill, you can really look at all aspects of their plant. You can look at their top hand and make sure it's staying close to their body and moving right alongside their body. You can look at their top arm and making sure that it's getting locked out all the way up before the tip hits the ground. Uh, you can look at the second step here and make sure that the pole tip is about eye level at that point. And there's other things you can look at as well that we haven't gotten into yet, like where their step is, uh, what they do with their bottom arm, uh, how they allow their body to stretch. Uh, but we'll dive into those aspects of this when we look at uh, the takeoff. There's one additional aspect of the plant that I need to address before we move on to the takeoff, and that is how to place the pole tip into the box. Now, there's really two things to look for when doing this. Number one, the tip should touch down near the center of the box and then slide to the back. And two, the touchdown of the tip should be smooth. So you don't want it to be bouncing around. So here in slow motion, Libby will demonstrate a four step walking plant drill into the box. And the thing to look for is where the tip touches down in the box, how it slides to the back and doesn't bounce around. Here Claire will be doing the same thing. It does look like she starts her plan a little bit early, but everything else looks good. Here Claire will do the same thing. And it does look like she starts the plant a little bit early, but everything else looks good. And that is Claire's did I do it right look, and she did do a good job. Just the plant started a little bit early. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into the pole vault plant, or more specifically learn how not to plant, David Butler has developed a series of videos detailing common dysfunctional plants. You can check them out on his YouTube channel, Art of the Vault. This video has been a production of the Shiawassee Vault Club, and we really hope you liked it. See you in the next one, and until then, have fun, be confident, and vault high.